Addicted to the Outdoors begins now. Well, I tell you, we always get excited when it's time for our annual CIO trip to Illinois. We head up every year with Dick and we chase those big white tails with a bow. And let's just say I will be thrilled if I can put something down even close to last year. Well, of course, we can't fly anywhere without catching some sort of delay. So, of course, we got delayed. Well, we are stuck in Chicago with uh, some sort of delay. So, uh, I don't know how much longer we're going to be here, but it don't matter because when we get to Illinois, we're going to stick a monster. I'm getting a monster. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Well, all of our gear made it. We got it loaded up in the grocery getter, and we're on our way to the woods. But we finally made it to CIO, headed to camp, and just had enough time to catch up with Dick and the boys. All right, see ya. <laughs> he goes, you and a white man with bags on top. <laughs> grocery getter. Well, we've been going to CIO for a lot of years, and we have built a very good friendship with Dick and Leo, so we tend to give each other a hard time. And I'll tell you, if I'm not sitting in a whitetail stand, I'm giving Dick and Leo a rough go of it. Well, I'll just show you. I got them marked. We're going to find out on this side. Yeah, I know here. how your markings are. Mm. Easy. You guys made it in okay? Was it yeah. late or no? No, we, our flight got delayed about an hour coming out of Chicago. We'll hunt here tomorrow, and then I'm moving you to my place, unless we get on one. So. You're about ready to maybe take me on, ain't you? Yep. I've been training hard, man. You're looking good, man. At CIO, they have got quite a few farms. So we were hunting this farm that was a pretty good distance from the main lodge, and we opted to jump in a hotel a little closer to the property we were going to hunt to actually let us get a little bit more sleep. Well, we got our camera arms hung, and we are ready to spank a big buck. So hopefully uh, tomorrow it will happen. It'd be nice to get one down on the first day. I need to grab our broadhead case and get our broadhead straight. So we got to the hotel, we unloaded our gear, and we were ready to rock and roll the next morning. Good day. Um, two majors today. Well, we got up the next morning and it was mid 20s. Uh, the weather was perfect and I was fired up. Baby, I got some big hot hands. Do you want them? But unfortunately, Gina had picked up some sort of bug and she wasn't feeling too hot. I was just miserable and I feel like I'm gonna throw up, but I'm gonna go sit on my stand anyways and hopefully I'll cuff something. It'd be nice to actually put some down the first day as opposed to the last day, which is what usually happens with us. There's a frost on the ground and uh, we're gonna see if we can go spank some. Oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe the morning that I've had. I woke up not feeling good, but you know, I'm in Illinois, so I have to hunt. And I knew I was gonna get sick. Finally get up, get in my stand, and then I throw up. Man, I am so glad I wasn't in the tree stand with Gina because that would have been a chain reaction. Ooh. First morning, perfect weather, peak of the rut. It was just a matter of time before Big Boy stepped out. It's supposed to be a high of 60, but man, it's uh, 9 o'clock and 28 degrees, so we'll see if it makes it there. Midday, we took a quick lunch break, and then we were back in the woods. Uh, it was 26 degrees this morning, 
and um, it is about 62 right now, so not sure how that's going to affect the deer. We just don't want to spook her. I heard some rustling in the leaves, and I turned around, and I saw a few does pop out, and then all of a sudden, there he was, the reason that we come to Illinois. Saver presents Addicted to the Outdoors with John and Gina Brunson. Now let's bring you up to speed. We always get excited when it's time for our annual CIO trip to Illinois. And we're on our way to the woods. I hit the can and here he comes. That buck stops two feet short of my shooting lane, looks back over his shoulder and sees his does leaving and the gig was up. I was a little bummed to see that buck leave, but it did tell me one thing, that there were some big bucks in the area. Oh man, look at well, we just seen what we were waiting for. Man, that was a stud. It's our second morning and I feel great. I feel like a new person and it's nice, cold and clear and we're gonna get after it. The next morning, you can take a guess at what stand I was sitting back in, but uh, that temperature started creeping up and the action started slowing down. They're not that far from us. We've got bucks crossing us at 40, 50, 60 yards, but they are in some super thick stuff and you just, you know, you can see a little hair here and there and you can see a couple of tines here and there and just, yeah, they're just slipping through this thick stuff. New game plan. It's day two, midday. Um, on the opposite end of this second field, there is a monster buck that is working that, that dry riverbed. So we're gonna pull these lock-ons out, slip down there, and basically get Gina repositioned for tonight and um, just camp out. Me, I'm gonna move my stand a little further across that other riverbank where we, were, where we saw that big boy last night and um, get it strapped in. And once that's done, we're just gonna camp out. Our evening hunt and I am ready to get something on the ground. So today, while I was riding horses, the guys took our stands down, moved them on the tree line. Gene is riding horses. What's up with that? So hopefully tonight, we'll get the big book down.
Well, after our evening hunt, we decided to shoot over to the Griggs to have dinner with everybody, but uh, nothing's that simple. We unintentionally decided to take the scenic route. Ooh. Oh my God. We are getting lost. See, that's back there. I, that's what I want to call it. I saw that rogie and I'm thinking, man, it was a weird name like that. That's a cop. Well, I didn't mean to. You now you know where we're going. Look for rogie. Okay. Yep. I knew I should have drove. I'm telling you, babe. Because well, we've been on this road for a while, and he said it's only five or six miles. That was Rupal? Yeah. No, you said Rogi. Rupal's, Rupal's in. Rupal's in. Rupal's in. Yeah, Rupal's in. Rupal's in. I told you I saw it. Wow. Told you. But Rupal Leave and Rogi are two different no, things. I, I called it. The road was there. We are struggling. Uh, yeah. So it's just really le all lefts and all rights on the way back. That's fine. You can do that. All right. Right here. Slow down. Slow. Right here. Right here. Right here. No, it's not. Rupal. Rupal. Oh. Oh. Why is it on that side? Oh, I told you that. I said that on the way down here the first time. And you're like, no, because uh, it's on the right. I'm like, no, I'm thinking there was a road on the no, left. You but said you were Rogi. so sure. But that's because you said the road was called Rogi. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, nay. I will go back and check the tape. And if that's, that's the case, fine. I will erase it. I don't know how it was my fault because they were telling me where to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. John, I'm on my side of the road. Huh? You are psycho. Okay, you need to slow down. John, I'm only going 30 miles an hour. Yeah, but there's a bunch of turns like that, Gina. Okay, we're going to be in a ditch. 30 is not fast. He said it's on the left. Maybe it's on the right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call Dick back because just to be safe. There's no more roads. He said it was on that road. Whoa. Oh, we're going to crash and be in a cornfield. Gina. What? I'm going 25. <laughs> uh, Gina has fixed to get found ah! in the cornfield. What's the name of the road that the lodge is on? Don't even say we're on the wrong road. Rogi. We're, okay, we're on Rogi. No, nah, we're on Rupal. Wait a minute. I told you that, John. Stop. I know. We, we, we're still good. We're still good. No, we're not. We're on Rupal. Like, way. Danny's the man. All right. Man, this has been a big ordeal. We've been everywhere <laughs> except to the right place. Oh, man. This is like the 18th call. No service. Oh, my God. Somebody shoot me. <laughs> Oh my God, you are not kidding. Don't even blame that on me, John. No, I'm not blaming it on you. It was not me. Well, we finally made it to the Grigsby and caught up with our good friend Donnie who hunts there every year with us. Well, it's fun to catch up with old friends like Donnie. We uh, only see him a couple times a year, but the Grigsby is one place we always see him. Do you see what they make me do around here? Had to carry my own decoy. Jeez, putting the girl to work. Hey, whatever works to get a big buck down, I'll do it. Except for uh, putting dough urine all over me, I won't do that. It's not like we were getting skunked. It's just with the weather warming up, these deer were moving real late. Where is his daddy? Oh, tomorrow's supposed to be the first freeze. And I, I don't know if they, this has got the deer bedded down. I know the cold is good. But as, since we've gotten back in our scene, we haven't seen anything. And we would see a nice buck, but he'd be out of bow range, or it'd be too late for the camera. And, you know, all in all, it was just tough. After a rough day in the stand, we're doing what we do best, going to the Grigsby to eat some dinner. So here's where we're at so far. We always get excited when it's time for our annual CIO trip to Illinois. Ten yards from getting smoked. Man, it, I mean, he was, he was 45 yards, I could, but I had no, I mean, no shot whatsoever. But I, I swear he's 160 and eight.
Well, it's always fun hanging out at camp, but this year was a little more fun than normal because we got to catch up with some of our friends from the industry, and we just don't get to hunt together that often. Not bow hunting. Not, I hate it there. <laughs> well, how often do I get to talk girl talk in camp? Not often, but man, it was so great to have Lee and Tiffany in camp. When they take their hair out, I mean, you, your hair is going to be broke. I know. So it's, it's like, kind of just like suck it up and that's, let it go. That's why I did it. Oh! We were all sitting around the living room watching deer footage, and guess who walks in the door? Eddie Salter. <laughs> Man, Eddie, he is such a sweetheart. Right, Eddie! <laughs> Well, I had to get back to the kids, so I headed out, and John decided to stay another day, and we would just catch up at the next trip. I'm leaving. I'm going home. I'll tell you what, we had to head home the next day, so it was time to make something happen. Well, yesterday I did a little bit of quick scouting and found this spot, which is where we actually moved the stand to yesterday. We've got a whole scrape line right down this wood line. We got some monster rubs right here. There's actually seven rubs that size within a 40 yard radius right in here. And there's four of them are on these trees right here. They're just destroyed. Well, we were having a pretty rough hunt, but our buddy Donnie, well, let's just say he was in the honey hole. This big old wide deer was headed his way. But unfortunately, he never made it into bow range. Man, what a buck. I guess this big old buck read the script because he was headed right down the trail. Good shot, you got him. You got him. Good shot, Donnie. When it hit crunch time, old Donnie closed the deal. He's down. He's down, baby. He's down. Woohoo! That's a pig. That's what I'm talking about. That's a pig. To say Donnie was excited, well, that's an understatement. That is a pig. Woo! Look at that buck. Look at that buck, buddy. That is awesome. Oh, corn right there? Awesome, dude. Look at them kickers he's got. Got a couple stickers. Yeah. 
13. Well, that'd be my second 13 pointer at the Grigsby. Well, guys, I can tell you one thing. I am out of gas. Whew. It's either this morning or it ain't gonna happen. You know, this is one of those trips where we put in the time, we did everything right, but because of weather, because of time of year, because of conditions that you just can't control, you end up not getting a big buck down. And um, a lot of people might look at this and say, well, they're they're out there, they got camera guys, they're spending time and spending money doing this. Uh, that's gotta be frustrating. And you know, for the most part, it's not. Um, we try to remember and stay focused on what hunting's all about, even though we now do it for a business. Hunting is about getting out with friends and having a good time. Um, this trip, we got to hunt with, you know, a lot of friends from the industry that we just don't get to see that often. We got to hunt with our buddy Donnie that we actually met on the road um, at an outfitter, and we just end up hunting with him two or three times a year. Uh, and that's what it's really about, getting out, sitting around the campfire, telling stories, and just having a good time, and making those lasting memories with friends and family. What's up with that? What's up with the little Nikon stretchy stretchy? Just kind of hanging there. Oh, did I drop it? No, it's still there. It didn't go nowhere. <laughs> oh, it slipped. It's okay. <laughs> It's sexy. Hey, when you're this good looking, it don't matter. I was just rambling on. That's no. right. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm talking about. That's a pig. That is a pig. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs>